Hello everyone and welcome to the Lay Studios. I am Pranita. Today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to well, use watercolors to paint these uh, dried autumnal leaves, but I'm using a different color palette. I'm using more purples and browns. I'm really enjoying that color palette right now. Um, I also bought a bunch of new paint brushes, watercolor brushes. They are the Is Isabe uh, line of brushes that they're made in France. And so, and I'm also going to be using Winsor Newton watercolor uh, hard pans and tubes. And so let's get started. So first I've already drawn out my leaves and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the wet on wet technique. So I'm just wetting the first section of this leaf right now and then I will slowly add pigment on top of that. So I'm picking up a little bit of purple and I'm mixing it with uh, the burnt umber. And I'm just laying down a base layer of pigment right now just to kind of lay out where my darks and lights are going to be. And I'm laying most of the pigment around the edges of this section and then letting it bleed through the rest of it. So I'm mixing in a few of the different colors here. I'm going to be using purple, the burnt umber, and a cadmium red. And I'm trying to make sure that I leave a few spots in the main body of the leaves uh, quite pale so that there's uh, quite a difference in tones and um, intensity of pigments throughout the whole leaf that get, just adds a little bit more visual interest. This is the first time I'm using these brushes and it's I, I splurged a little bit and invested a little bit in these brushes and just even in the first few minutes of using it there's such a huge difference in the amount of water retention and the amount of pigment retention and also like just how well the brushes flow um, on the paper it, they're they're absolutely amazing I'm completely spoiled I'll never be able to go back to the other student brushes ever I don't think these brushes are made out of natural fibers. I think most of them are uh, squirrel, gray squirrel, and they're absolutely amazing. There's, there's something about the texture. Um, the, the, the bristles aren't uh, completely smooth, so the natural hair has um, a slight texture to them where like, the water and the pigment can be retained a lot better, uh, whereas synthetic fibers are very, very smooth, so things kind of just wash off them or like fly off them quite easily. If you go to the Isabe, um, and that's spelled I-S-A-B-E-Y, if you go to their website they'll actually show you electron uh, microscope images of the different kinds of bristles that they uh, manufacture their brushes with and uh, they're all handmade as well and the finish on them is beautiful and they've got a few different series and yeah I can't wait to add to my collection. So now I'm leaving that first leaf to dry and I'm moving on to the next one. Again wet on wet so I've just wet down the section that I want to paint and I find using watercolors like this way and doing it in sections really allows control as to how intense you want your pigments to be because like the back side of these leaves I want them to be much darker because they'll be in the shadow so I probably want to go like a wet on dry in those sections so that's why I'm wetting only a small section of the painting before I start painting. This one I'm adding a little bit more of the purples 
Again, concentrating the pigment on the outside and letting it bleed into the center. And now I'm trying to plan out where I'm going to add like, the little folds and the, the crispy edges of these dry leaves. It's a matter of just building up the layers and building them slowly and taking away a little bit and adding more as you keep going along. And I found, especially like just going through even this, this study um, of the leaves, um, the, the next time I do this, I'm going to definitely concentrate on the edges more. And because I wanted to go for a dried leaf um, look, more autumnal leaf look, um, not having a very crisp edge is the way to go. So to have little breaks in the shape of the leaf, and this is more of an aesthetic thing and a drawing thing really than more than a painting thing. It's like making sure that that edge of the leaf has more cracks in it and has and is not quite so even and, 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 and uniform all the way around. I think that just adds a lot more character and dimension. So for this one, I'm going a little bit heavier with the browns and the reds. Again, laying down some water and then adding the color on top for a wet on wet effect. Another thing I'm going to do the next time I do this is like definitely redefine really exactly where my light source is because for this one what I was wanting to concentrate on was just actually using this color palette and playing with this color palette and trying these brushes out. So for the next one I'm going to really concentrate on making the whole thing one cohesive piece. For each leaf in this one I kind of chose a different um, light source. So next time I'm gonna have something just a little bit more planned out, a little bit more uh, polished. And this is, yeah, like I said, this is just a, uh, I really wanted to play with this color palette and these brushes. This leaf actually like bends up quite severely so it allows for a really nice um, distinction and contrast in colors so now I'm going to start painting the darker areas uh, the rest of the pieces dry so I don't have to worry about these darker tones bleeding into those if you want you can either wait if you're working on a bigger piece for one section to dry before you revisit it I like keeping a little um, hair dryer uh, on hand so I can just zap my paper real quick and it makes the process a whole lot faster as you can imagine and so yeah now I'm just trying to make sure that I can make the underside and the top side of these leaves very distinct. So I'm using more and more purple on the undersides and using more and more intense uh, pigment and less water. details this is the first layer of detail so I'm just darkening up the stalks and starting to add in the I'm not sure what they're 
technically called, but like the, the actual veins and the striations on the leaves. So this is just the first layer of that. So I don't want it to be very, very intense. So you'll probably even see me, as I put it on, I'll dab away a lot of the pigment with my tissue because I want it to be quite subtle at this point. series and I'm just trying to really delicately and not completely outline the entire shape of the leaf but trying to add just little bits and pieces of um, dimension by uh, using um, mostly the purple and a little bit of the red. start doing is starting to add even more dimension and depth to that um, first layer by adding a little bit of water and then just intensifying the pigment a little bit more and what I found with watercolors is the trick is to not blend everything out so even though like, there are some hard edges I'm going to leave some of those behind because again that just adds to the beauty of what watercolor does on paper and I love those little lines and it just adds so much more interest, visual interest. So um, the key I think is to make sure that you don't blend everything in and don't um, blend all of your edges in, leave some of them hard and um, allow that to just happen because that's what the medium is best at. completely uniform and perfectly uh, so smooth. So here I'm actually trying to use a different brush, a synthetic bristle brush, and try to agitate some of that pigment and actually take some of it off so I can redefine that edge and add a little crack in it. So it shows that you know even if you have something painted already with watercolors, it does give you a little bit of freedom to rework something even after it's been laid down. There is a certain amount of pigment that you can still lift. All right, and that is the finished product. Uh, thank you so much for joining me and I hope this was informational and that you learned something and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.